You have a future with your man of God. That's why you keep on going. That's why you keep on producing. That's why you keep on operating in effectiveness and faithfulness. Because you have a future with your man of God. The man of God sent to your life is really an eternal connection. That's a person that, uh, it is really the embodiment of God's spirit, the embodiment of God's mind, the embodiment of God's nature. If you want to know what Jesus is currently doing, your man of God will depict it. Your man of God will show it. Your man of God will reveal it to you. Your man of God is a whole encyclopedia of God's behavior. God's conduct. He's a library of God's ways. He's the universe of God's operation. He's the classroom of God's literature. You have a future with your man of God. Remember, the term man of God means that that man is made up of God particles, made up of God's personality made up of God's perseverance. That's why men of, um, your man of God will go through uh, traumatic situations, but you'll never see that man of God stop because they're made up of God's perseverance. They're made up of God's prosperity. And so they have God's prosperity inside of them. They are God's prosperity. That's why when you treat them right, your prosperity comes forth in your own life because they are God's prosperity. You have a future with your man of God. It means that there's favor, there's accessibility, there are conversations, there's moments, there's pleasurable experiences, there's time of learning, time of mentorship, time of graces, time of freedom. That means that your man of God will give you a truth that is specified for you, for your life, for your situation, for your dealings, for your conflicts. And that truth will set you free. You have a future with your man of God. That's why you remain in respect towards them. You have a future with your man of God. That's why you never let someone be able to document you talking against them. You have a future with your man of God. That's why you never mock them. You have a future with your man of God. That's why you never allow your mindset to go contrary to what they need, their vision. There are people that search all their life for, for the approval of a man of God and they go from place to place. And even if they get favor, the favor does nothing for them. There is a man of God that their favor, their favor, your man of God's favor places you underneath an open heaven. And so everything changes, even your health, your focus, your energy, your knowledge, your wisdom, your self-control, your patience, your appetite to grow in the supernatural, your appetite to ascend into the heavenly realms, live out of the third heaven, operate in constant conversation with the Father, know the voice of the Holy Spirit, Walk in faith, have dominion, exercise power, exercise glory, exercise thanksgiving. There are major tripling effects that happen when you're with your man of God. That's different than if you're with a man of God. The man of God that you have, that God is possessing that body, talking to you in, has a favor that brings money back into the blessing for your sake, brings health back into the blessing for your sake. Your man of God needs your focus. Your man of God needs your enthusiasm. Your man of God needs your wisdom. Because remember, wisdom ministers to a man of God because they see that the fear of God is your goal. Foolishness speaks to a man of God that you don't care about God's heart. So it changes your his perception about you.
That's very, very, very strong. Wisdom, it brings favor because the man of God sees that you have a conscience, that you are not willing to hurt God with your actions. And so it brings a favor towards you. A man of God can't favor, like, like, for instance, there's a lot of times people want to be around a man of God, but the man of God wouldn't want to be around you because the man of God sees that you're, 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 you're loose. Like you can listen to the devil and not care. Remember the man of God is of God. So the man of God is made up of godliness, of fear of God, of wisdom of God. So if, if you operate in another spirit, that man of God will watch that and will not be turned on by you, will be turned off rather. Because that man of God will see, okay, if I'm of God and you can go against what's of God and it don't concern you, you're going to be of, against me. Because that's what I'm made up of. I'm made up of the fear of God, I'm made, up of, made up of sensitivity. I'm made up of patience. I'm made up of wisdom. I'm made up of surrender, submission. I'm made up of quietness when I'm supposed to be quiet. I'm made up of self-control when I'm supposed to be restrained. I'm made up of faithfulness when I'm supposed to be consistent. I'm made up of work ethic when I'm supposed to be doing the business of God. You have a future with your man of God. You have a future with your man of God. So when your man of God is in your life, remember, everything that you're doing is not in vain. God speaks to the man of God when you are consistent and tells him things. Always protect your heart when you get favor with the man of God. Protect your heart because your heart should never fight that man of God when he favors you. Your heart should never betray that man of God when he favors you. Your heart should never bring any grief to that man of God after he favors you. Because remember, favor is the man of God bringing you into his realm. It's not, it's, he doesn't need your realm. He's bringing you into his realm because you need his realm. And so you nurture those moments with decisions of understanding, decisions of intelligence, decisions of truth, decisions of fear of God. Remember what brings that favor strong is when the man of God can see the fear of God. Men of God see a lot of people that don't have the fear of God. Even if we do like them, we see that they don't have the fear of God. They don't have a conscious. They don't have an awareness that if this is not what God wants, I won't do it. They'll go straight ahead and see that man of God watches a lot of people with that mindset. Stubbornness. The man of God watches a lot of people that just have a mindset that I'm going to keep on going. I ain't going to stop. Ain't nobody going to stop me. I want to do this, so I'm going to do it. And that mindset is very dangerous to that man of God's environment. That man of God needs to see humbleness, lowliness of heart, wanting to please God's soul. Not your own soul, but God's soul. You have a future with your man of God. Elisha learned how to do all the things that Elijah loved, even sanctification, even continuance, even loyalty, readiness. He was always ready. You notice when Elijah said, I'm going over here, Elisha didn't say, hold on, let me go brush my teeth. When Elijah said, I want you to go here, or uh, Elijah said, I'm going over here. Elisha said, oh, I'll go with you. E Elisha didn't say, hold on, let me call my mama first. My mama, 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 my mama. I got to call my mama before I go. My mama say, my mama say. 
Elisha didn't say, hold on, let me call my wife. Let me call my children. Let me call my daddy. Let me call my mommy. Let me call my auntie. Let me call my cousin and make sure I can go with you. Elisha was always ready to go. We look at people like Esther. She was always ready. She was ready to talk to the king. She was ready to know what to say to the king. She never embarrassed the king. The king never had to pull Esther aside and say, uh, Esther, I don't want you doing that. Uh, Esther, I don't want you saying that. Esther, I don't want you behaving like that. Esther, don't say that to those people. Never. Because she was a woman that understood I have a future with my man of God. The same way with Ruth. Ruth had a future with a man of God. You never see her going and saying, uh, hey, hey, uh, 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 you know, everything that she said and did was to protect the future she had with her man of God. Since we look at people like John, the disciple, Peter, James, they were doing things, recognizing that they had a future with Jesus. Their actions were proof that they had a future with Jesus. Mary Magdalene recognized she had a future with a man of God. So she, so she stayed connected with him even when he died. Even when he died, she stayed connected to him. Imagine he's not in the physical form, but she in the physical form stays connected. She has a physical form. He does it. But she stays connected to him. He's doing no teachings and she stays connected to him. He's not ministering on the Mount of Olives. He's not ministering in Jerusalem, but she stays connected to him. He's not doing any conferences, but she stays connected to him. He is not healing the sick or raising the dead, but she stays connected to him. In the time frame where he is saying not one word in the physical form, she stays connected to him. She recognized she had a future with her man of God. When you have a future with your man of God, you'll never live a life that they teach against. When you realize that you have a future with your man of God, when you don't realize that you have a future with your man of God, you'll live a life that they teach against. You'll, you'll, you'll plant yourself in the things that they tell you is wrong because you don't have any understanding. Your future with your man of God can't be aborted. It only can be aborted by you. It can't be aborted by them. Because when they see you operating in your purpose, the purpose of God is made manifest. When they see you operating in your purpose. When they see you operating in your purpose. Your man of God gets irritated when you slow. That's an irritation. When you have no discernment, when you're not watchful, it's an irritation to your man of God. Remember, it's a man of God. They're made up of God's traits. Man of God means made up of God's ways, God's characteristics. So, so God is not a fool. So they hate foolishness. Because they're made up of God's traits and particles. The, the neurology of God, the mentality of God, all of that is flowing in them. A man of God, a man that is not manly, but godly. A man of God means that God has, has saturated a man. So you're not dealing with a man that you see every day. You're dealing with God intercepting manhood. You're dealing with God overtaking manhood. And God living as a man. A man of God is God living as a man.
God living in a man form. You have a future with your man of God, so you should always be aiming at reaching the high calling that's on you as a person because that high calling has that favor with that man of God. Let me give you something real powerful. I'm gonna, I, I want to say this before I get off of here. That's real clear. You have a future with your man of God, but that future is not in your flesh. So if you operate in that flesh, you'll never get to that future. That future with your man of God is not in disloyalty, distraction, temptation, waywardness, inconsistency, depression, fear, laziness, slothfulness, anxiety, worry. That's disrespect, uh, dishonesty, uh, lying, stealing. Uh, fear, worry, stress, that's not in that schedule of God. So if you, if you wear and live out these things, you can't live out the schedule of God. But when you relinquish these things and deny yourself and you live according to the spirit, all these things that's in the plan of God for you and your man of God together for you to do it with him are now made manifest. So let me just give you an example. If Elisha is a gangbanger, if Elisha is impregnating people, if Elisha is going to and fro the earth, smoking weed, doing stuff, him and Elijah can't fulfill their future. Elisha has to leave everything that's of flesh and choose what's of spirit, of God. And now he can live in the schedule. So when he said, I will go with you, that is in the spirit. If he's in the flesh, he'll say, yeah, dog, you go ahead and handle that. It's too hot right now, man. You know, I got heat burning last time. I got dizzy last time I went with you. You know what I'm saying? I, I, my blood pressure a little high. It's, it's a little hot out here, boy. It's, that donkey wasn't working correct. That donkey, when we got on that ass last time, the ass, the ass, the, we had to stop, get some water two times, three times. It wasn't no fun ride. It wasn't. You know what I'm saying? It's, you know what I'm saying? You need, we need an umbrella out here. Too hot out here. I ain't get... Ah. I'm trying to walk that walk that donkey up there. The donkey up there talking back and the donkey talking back. I don't want no donkey to talk back on me. Either. Don't talk back. Don't talk back. Just look back. This. <laughs> don't talk back. Just look back. Elisha was in the spirit, so the schedule that he had with his man of God was made manifest. There are schedules that can be aborted. Because if you're not in the spirit, how could the schedule that's in, only in the spirit come to pass? There are things that are in the spirit, so if you're not in the spirit, they can't happen. Like saints, multi-millionaire status, think about it. God has multi-millionaire status for you in the spirit. But the spirit may have you do things that you, your flesh don't want to do. Your spirit will have you go work. But your flesh like, nah, I ain't working. Your spirit will have you forgive somebody. But your, your flesh will say, nah, they did this to you. You don't forgive somebody that do this to you. You see what I'm saying? Your, your, your spirit, it is carrying all of your empowered mindsets, empowered money, and empowered moments. So if you're in the flesh, you can't do it. Because your flesh is not going to allow that spiritual schedule to happen. You have a future with your man of God. 
That's why you purge yourself. You have a future with your man of God. That's why you seek to impress him. You have a future with your man of God. That's why you, 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 you perform your intelligence towards him. Let him see your sincerity to the spirit of the Lord. The spirit of the Lord. That means that you are in covenant to impress the spirit of the Lord. The spirit of the Lord, if you're, you're over in a state, a city, and the spirit of the Lord says this and this, you're going to do what he say, even though you don't see a physical eye watching you. Because your goal is to impress the spirit of the Lord. Let your man of God see that you love the spirit of the Lord. Because if you don't love the spirit of the Lord, you can betray that man of God. If you don't love the spirit of the Lord, you could disrespect that man of God. If you don't love the spirit of the Lord, you could hurt that man of God. If you don't love the spirit of the Lord, there's nothing going to be restraining you or causing you to hear correctly. You ever seen somebody argue with a man of God? Now, I'm, I'm not saying just two men of God, three men of God. I'm just saying in general, over the course of your life, have you ever seen somebody argue with a man of God? They don't have the Holy Spirit as their love. And so there's nothing telling them, stop. That they will listen to. They won't listen to him if he say, don't do that, don't do that. They're going to say, no, I'm going to do that. Because there's no love. Let your man of God see that you love the spirit of the Lord. When you love the spirit of God, the schedule of God will come to pass. Because the schedule with your favor with your man of God is in the spirit. Our schedule together is in the spirit. If you love the devil, you also love the abortion of the schedule.